Here we are with the final video now of this series and we are ready to export the textures from Substance Painter into Blender. Reminder that we have used uh, UV tiles, the UDIM method to texture this and we've got pretty high quality textures. But before we export, let's make sure we change from 1024 to 2048. Give it a second to uh, load that texture resolution. and we're going to export the textures so there it is i will say one thing i have removed the white labels that i typed in here in substance painter and i've got something else lined up in blender that i'm going to show you uh, in just a moment so let's get ready to export let's come over to file export textures here you can see we're going to be exporting the body and the buttons and we're going to have quite a few of 2k textures coming out However, you don't have to worry because we're only going to have to set up a few of these textures or maps, just the 1001, and Blender is going to find the 1002, 1003, 1004, just like that. It's going to be very straightforward. All right, so for the output template, uh, let's go to settings. I'm just going to choose PBR Metallic Roughness, decide where I'm going to send it. I'm going to do PNG at 16 bits. I'll leave everything else the same and I would click export. I've already done this, so I'm not going to do it. Just take a minute to uh, export all those maps. Okay, over to Blender now. Here in Blender, I have a few things hidden. I'm going to show you those uh, in a moment, but we're going to load the textures now. Unfortunately, I only have two materials. I've got the body material here and I've got the buttons and they're all together. So it should be pretty straightforward to do. So let's go over to the shading tab and uh, let's try the body first. All right, so how to do this. Uh, instead of doing shift control T, I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to shift A, texture image, and I'm gonna do this by hand. I'm gonna come to the open and find the panel part one, okay, body base color, 1001. I'm gonna click open texture. It's gonna set this as UDIM tiles down here. I'm gonna connect this to the base color. And it's gonna load that in. I just wanna make sure this is the right one without labels. It's looking good so far. So I'm now going to shift D to duplicate that, copy it down and I'll do the metallic. So I'm now going to I'm on the body, but scroll down to body, find the metallic 1001. I don't have to worry about these other ones. Just that one, open it, connect that to the metallic. Okay, I'm going to duplicate that down. And I'm going to do the roughness now. So search for roughness, body roughness 1001. Open that and connect that to roughness. Give it a second. So far so good. Now I got the shine on there. I'm just going to move these over and down a little bit. And because I did my height, anything that's indented or pushed out for that matter, using alphas, not normal map. Uh, and, and there was really no real normal map detail on this when I brought it in. Not very much anyhow, if, if any. I'm going to use the height map and not the normal map. So I'm going to copy this down. I'm going to open up height, body, 1001, height, but I need a vector bump in between. So I'll connect the color to the height. I'll leave that, plug that into the normal. And now we should get our height detail in there for the scratches and stuff. Okay. To do the buttons just as easy select them and do the same thing shift a texture image texture i'm going to open up instead of body i'm going to scroll down to buttons find the first one base color 1001 plug that in and you should start seeing them go okay see the colors there and we'll run through the same thing with the metallic the roughness and the height
I've got the buttons in there. The only thing we're missing is the emissive. So let's do that. Take this one, copy it down here, and find the buttons emissive 1001. Don't have to worry about all the other ones. Look at all the emissives. All right, isn't this great? Take this, plug this into emission, and choose your emission strength. Let's go back to layout, turn that on. I'm going to render an Eevee, so I want to make sure I've got this stuff on here. Bloom and ambient occlusion, screen space reflections. All right. So we have this. I'm going to um, turn on the dials that I've got. So here are my dials, some lights, the radar, and the text labels. And there they are. the alpha that we did all the buttons glowing the labels are in there the dials the radar screen the glasses in there all right so I'll give this a quick uh, render and we can look at a render or two and we will have succeeded in doing this the only thing that I haven't done which I don't think I'm going to do not right now is uh, put these panels on angles and stuff I think I'm going to leave it at this point and call the series done all right let's have a look at a couple renders so here is a render right now I have added a little bit in compositing but you can get a sense of this I'll bring it up to hundred percent even if the labels are not uh, really readable, I don't care about that. Uh, often they wouldn't be in a game anyhow. All right, I'll just scroll you through this. Okay. And really, um, I just have renders from a couple of different angles just to show you the textures. So, uh, using the UDIMS method allowed me to get higher resolution than I would have, especially with this many panels and this many parts. It already allowed me to get good resolution and I'm very happy with how that part turned out. All right, here you can see we're, uh, I'll go up to 100% zoomed in quite a bit and everything looks quite, uh, quite nice, at least very acceptable. This is an Eevee, by the way, all right, which is really my preferred render um, at this point. All right, so that's going to end uh, the, the uh, series for me. Thank you very much for watching this. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to move on to something different, and uh, I hope you'll come back again for that. Take care.